Hey everyone, welcome back to yet another episode of Coffee Time with Mr. Ying, with your host Mr. Ying. And it's Friday afternoon, people are getting off work. So let's keep it nice and easy, simple and short, and let's just dive into this book review. But before I get started, I just want to say thank you for all of my reviewers, all of my audience out there who watch my video, watch my episodes. I could have not done this without you, specifically specifically the connections from my work on LinkedIn, as well as friends, family. You guys are amazing. Thank you for watching the video. In addition, of course, I want to thank Pack Publisher for this amazing collaboration opportunity. And if this is the first time you're seeing this, the workflow is they send me a book, and then I review the book, I prepare the video, and I give a book review. So hopefully this could provide some guidance and prior knowledge for those of you who are hesitating or trying to make a decision of whether to buy this book or not. With that being said, let's dive in. The title of this book is called Production Ready Applied Deep Learning. So right off the bat, I just want to say how I wish that this book existed when I was doing my PhD program, right? And the reason I'm saying that is because this kind of material is extremely limited in the school, in the university, and when I come to the job market, I actually have to relearn some of this stuff, okay? That's the first thing I want to throw at you guys, to really pinpoint the pain spot when you are transitioning from a student to an employee. And I think right off the bat, this is the value that this title brings on the table. In school, you're working out a mathematical equation. Maybe there's a motivation that you figure out. Maybe the motivation is just whatever reasoning that the professor gave you, right? And then you work out a model, you work out a simulation, boom, maybe you have a model. And in school, the quote unquote production is really just about writing a paper. And some people even do it in Word document. And then after that, maybe you go to a conference, give a presentation, maybe you talk to your professor, give another presentation. And then maybe the best case scenario is you write a paper, paper go through the review process, and the peer review give you a nice comment your paper made into that journal. You pay your article processing charge, and boom, you have a publication. All that sounds good if you can do a thumb up, right? But that's not the same concept of in production as what we talk about in the industry. So that's a problem, okay? How this book contributes to the community is it filling that gap between the ability of writing a paper, get it published, to passing that job interview in the industry how you get the model deployed. So that leads to my first point, which is how I appreciate the existence of this book. And of course, it's related content. And I want to pinpoint to all of you guys, especially if you're students, the importance of production ready model. So with that being said, first things first is a contributor, authors, right? There are actually three authors for this book. And these are truly amazing people in their own field. First author, Thomas, Pazuski, thank you so much. You've been amazing at orchestrating the structure of this book, and I truly appreciate that this is the value that you bring on the table, right? He's a staff software engineer at Samsung. He has a PhD in physics and additionally an MBA. And then on top of that, he's been in so many different fields focusing on deploying machine learning model or deep learning model in industry for a variety of different companies. So he's a truly amazing guy as one of the co-authors. Second co-author is Jae Jun Lee, or Brandon Lee. And immediately when I look at the name, I was like, okay, this dude has got the same name as the son of Bruce Lee. How awesome is that, right? So Jae Jun Lee, or Brandon Lee, you've been an absolute legend, right? As one of the co-authors of the book, this author is the AI research lead at RoboEye. And what they're doing is to translate cutting-edge technology from computer vision and other fields of AI, such as natural language processing, to automation solutions, which then they can deploy and sell it to other companies. So when I look at the profile, I didn't really see any overlap between these two authors, but it's truly amazing to see how they got together and work out this book and put their collective experience together, all sum up in this one title. And of course, let's not forget the third and the last author of this title, his name is Lennon Mukia. Lennon is a machine learning engineer who's also been in Samsung. 
And prior to that, he's been eBay as well as Adobe. So eBay and Adobe, I'm pretty sure most of you guys have heard of them. I use eBay myself. I use Adobe on a day-to-day -day basis. And this dude has solid background. He's been in the industry for 11 years. And it's a wide range of different categories of sectors. We're talking about banking, retail, electronics, media, and so on and so forth. So it truly ties up to what Andrew N has said, right? AI for all and how you empower the company's decision-making process using AI first methods. So all these authors are amazing. If you guys are watching this video, here's a big, big shout out to all three of you. Thank you for bringing all your experience on the table and share with the community. And after reviewing this book, I can tell all of you guys, hey, you guys are in good hands, right? This type of experience is definitely something that can add a lot of bonus on top of your 4.0 GPAs that all your undergraduates are getting. So with that being said, let's start with the real content of this title. So when I'm doing this book review, immediately the feeling I'm getting is, hey, I have to make a side-by-side -side comparison of what things look like in school and in industry, in production. So look at the motivation, right? Chapter one of this book. Immediately, it starts with effective planning of deep learning projects. And the effective planning should really tie up to what is the business value added if this thing can be successfully deployed in production? What is the synergy? How much value are you generating from this project, right? Is it tangible? Does it translate to cost saving or profit driven? Or is it intangible? Does that translate to some sort of hidden intellectual property that can appreciate over time for your company, right? So immediately right off the bat, this is the first chapter that you dive into. Comparing with in school, hey, let's talk about calculus. What is the motivation? Oh, to graduate, right? Immediately, that's the difference, right? Very obvious, there's nothing else need to be said. So what is effective planning, right? What are we talking about? What context are we taking into consideration? Well, first of all, what is your sponsor, right? Who is in charge of this program? Who is paying for it? You gotta know who that guy is, right? So what is the definition of the business? How do you justify the existence of the project? If you want to exit, if you want to cancel, who do you talk to, right? Sponsor. And second one is what? What is your project lead, right? Somebody who's experienced enough to handle each component of the project, but doesn't necessarily do the coding, do the technical walkthrough himself or herself. So this guy needs to exist, right? To really motivate team members to do the hard work, to achieve the success that's necessary for the project. And of course, along with that role, you need a project manager. And the project manager is extremely important because he or she lays out the groundwork, lays out a schedule that need to be done, that need to happen on a step-by-step -step procedure. And on top of that, it's the risk assessment, right? If we put five guys on this team and this is how much salary we're paying for this team, what is the value added? So someone needs to figure that out. And that is the job of the project manager. And then on top of that, you have data engineer, data scientists, DevOps, software engineer, and so on and so forth. So what this book is doing differently is that it goes into great length of detail to walk the reader through each of these roles right off the bat in the beginning of the book before it jumps into all the complicated math, all of the coding, and how to get things deployed, and so on and so forth. This is extremely important because this gives reader a highlight of what is going on who do you talk to, and how each role is playing interactively so that you know how the team function. So if you're someone like me who actually struggled a little bit when I was making the transition from being a student to being in the industry, I think this chapter has done the job for you. Had I had this book before, I could probably tell you that my life would be much easier. So there's motivation for the pipeline, for the data science project. There's also motivation for the model, right? So diving into the book content, chapter two and three will then focus on what is the data? How do you process data? And then what is the model? And how do you build the model? So these two chapters, probably standard content, you're probably gonna see some overlap between some of the materials out there online or on other social media. 
which is fine, but what these two chapters focus on is deep learning model, right? Specifically, we're talking about TensorFlow and PyTorch, which then is a little bit more targeted and a little bit more focused towards the emphasis on deep learning models, which I truly appreciate because most of my job is deep learning based. I think maybe so far this one model that I touched is not deep learning. Everything else I can tell you it's most likely deep learning based. So for those of you out there who are making the transition from students to an employee and you want to focus on deep learning models, this book will get that job done for you. And then on top of that, I just want to say at this point, I've read probably 30 books that are talking about the neural networks component. And each of these titles are talking about the same math, same models, but they come from a different philosophy. And I can tell you that the more correct or agreed upon philosophy is probably that by Yan Le Kun, because he is leading guy in neural network and he first published the paper in 1988. And his philosophy is kind of like a general overview of what we agreed upon. So what that means is neural network falls under this field called representation learning. Okay, it's not your conventional machine learning. For the conventional machine learning, if you look at logistic regression, if you look at random forest, support vector machine, the features are handcrafted, right? If you want to predict the housing price, you better figure out how many bedrooms are there. You better figure out what is the square footage. These are features. These are features that could probably help you predict the housing price. Well, then you got to tell the machine what these features are. You better be able to say specifically down to the 10th digit what this number is. Otherwise, you won't have the training data and you probably won't be able to train your model. And then on top of that, if you're not satisfied with number of bedrooms, if you're not, satis if you're not satisfied with square footage, you might be like, okay, we got to create some new features. Let's do some feature engineer, right? Let's put those two features together, product. That's going to be our new feature. So whenever you have ideas like this, guess what? You're going to have to input this feature in the model as a new feature. And that's going to be problematic because every time I have a new idea, I have to enter this from scratch, which makes the training process by using conventional machine learning models a little bit more tedious and clumsy. So the caveat is, okay, how about representation learning? And what is the way to train a model? Neural networks. So in representation learning, forget about handcraft features, right? Whatever it is in your data set, number of bedrooms, square footage, just throw in the data. By building deeper and deeper neural network model, the neural network is able to pick up some of these hidden relationships on a higher level intrinsically to make the prediction happen. So you do not have to handcraft features one by one. The hidden layers in the neural network model will do that job for you. So that is the philosophy that this team of authors are taking on when they're introducing deep learning model. And having been reading and reviewing 30 plus titles, I can tell you this kind of philosophy will probably help people to understand the real benefit and motivation of neural network based models much better. And it's safe to say that this book does this job for you. And then the rest of the book, I'm not going to bore you guys with that. You guys got to read the book, right? Which leads to part two and part three. And they span from chapter four and five all the way to chapter 13. So part two and part three is about building that product and get it shipped out and deployed, which then you can imagine, right? A lot of data processing going on, a lot of API building, right? You probably need to build a glue crawler, probably need to build some data catalog in your AWS, right? And then you got to get them all deployed, right? What does a training script look like? How does it affect your training? Do you want to train locally or do you want to train parallel? And if you want to train parallel, how does the process work when the training is on demand, right? So all these things need to happen and all these things need to be carefully laid out. And the part two and part three of this book lays that job out for you on a step-by-step -step process, extremely clear. And then after the appointment, you got to wrap things up, take things home, right? You've already built this amazing model. Let's not forget it, right? Let's not drop it. It's a hard work. You need to maintain it, right? Hopefully this product that you're building doesn't just stay on the shelf, right? You want to keep maintaining it so that the stakeholders, the front end, whatever audience that's using this product 
have the needs and desire to continue to use that. And it is your job to figure out what that needs is and how do you implement and update the existing pipeline such that it continuously satisfies the demands of your front-end audience as well as your stakeholders. So with that being said, that is the review for this title. Overall, I think it's a great book to have and it's definitely something that I recommend all of the graduate students to read about when you're making the transition from being a student to go into the industry. And for those of you who are beginners and who want to get a new job as a data scientist, this book is definitely a must have. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe to the channel and give a like. And I'll see you guys in the next episode.